the harbour wall that I'm going to fish this afternoon and into the early evening in the hope that I might pick up a mullet. Now there's a couple of ways you can fish this harbour wall from mullet. One is to fish the bubble float and fish floating, either floating bread or bread just below the surface. And that's probably the way that I'll start off. The tide has been flooding in about half an hour and the, the water's still very shallow. It's not a very, very deep harbour wall at the high water mark. It's only going to be about 15, 20 foot deep and it's quite shallow at the moment. So I'll probably fish the, fish the bubble float to start with and see if I can pick one up. But when the tide floods in a bit, then I might try get <clears throat> leading up to high water. I might swap over and fish a conventional float, maybe a sliding float and fish deeper down, fairly close to the bottom. So taking a look at the tackle that I've got with me, it's not conventional mullet fishing tackle. I, mean, I don't go mullet fishing enough to justify the cost, but I've got tackle that's perfectly suitable, particularly for fishing off a harbour wall. The rod I've got here is one of these LRF rods. It's an eight foot, just two to 10 gram rod, and that's absolutely fine from the harbour wall. And the great thing about it, of course, because it's such a light rod, it's got a really, really fle flexible tip there. And that's gonna, that, that helps to play the hard fighting mullet. And on, that, on the rod, I've got a 3000 size spinning reel and that's loaded with just eight pound braid. And then tied to the end of the braid, I've got some about three foot of eight pound fluorocarbon and as I'm starting with a bubble float, so eight pound fluorocarbon tied to join to one end of the bubble float. And then the, the hook link is just four pound fluorocarbon. So very, very thin fluorocarbon. In fact, it's so thin, I can hardly see it. And then to the end of the fluorocarbon, the hook I'm using is just a number 10 carp hook. So quite a small hook. So that's the rig that I'm going to start off with. But I've got a couple of the conventional floats with me. These are self-cocking floats, um, which I'll probably swap over. And when, if I, when I swap over to that later, we'll have a look how I set that up. Now the bait here is usually bread. bread. Bread works the best. It's, it's the bait that I've had the most success with. Whereas other harbour walls, mackerel flesh tends to be better and other baits you can use, but bread seems to work here. Some of the mullet have been educated to take bread. Um, we've get, got some resident swans that come in here and some of the residents feed them around the high water mark up on the wall across there. And of course the mullet will cotton onto this and, and feed on the bread. So, although not all the mullet uh, are going to be educated to take bread, so what I've got with me, what I like to use is to try and, A, to try and attract them to me and, and B, to try and get them used to taking bread. This is a little prawn pot that I sometimes use on the kayak and it's ideal actually to lower it down the edge of the harbour wall. I've got it weighted with a couple of four ounce weights to keep it down and I'll lower that down when the tide has come in enough I'll lower that down the edge of the harbour wall and, and have it either sitting on the bottom or just off the bottom and hopefully the idea is that the bread will it's got very small mesh the bits of bread will slowly get washed out of this in the tide and maybe track track the mullet to me which is which is what I really want to do just got a SMB reel there which is very very useful to lower this lower and raise this down and later when I change to the conventional float fishing method just have a look here there's a ledge there and often if it's clear enough and calm enough you can see the mullet coming feeding around that ledge and what they do they pick they pick at the the algae on the ledge and what I'll, I'll do I'll lower my prawn pot down with the bread and just have it close to that ledge there and then the idea is that with the sliding float I'll fish the fish bread just above that ledge but that's later but we'll start with the 
bubble float but also got what I've got with me just in case I am lucky enough to hook hook a mullet I've got a drop net with me and whenever I go harbour wall fishing these days I always take a drop net even if I'm maybe spinning or float fishing for mackerel and the reason for that is there's always the unexpected in fishing you never know what you might catch and it's happened to me and I've seen it happen on harbour walls where people hook into a fish they don't expect bigger than they expected and then haven't quite got the strong enough tackle to haul it up and then you end up having to play the fish around the wall to the nearest steps which could be quite away with the risk of losing it so really useful to have a drop net with you when you go harbour wall fishing even if you even if you're only sort of fi fishing for mackerel just in case I mean you can buy these for fairly cheaply but this is just one I've made up myself it's just, well, it was a collapsible crab pot that I used to use but I've converted it to a drop net and again using the SMB reels are quite handy that I use on the kayak right so we'll get started the water's a bit low at the moment um, but it's coming in it's flooding in now so I haven't, I haven't seen any mullet but I've heard there's one or two mullet around and I've had them off here but ah and I've just said that and there they are there's you won't, might not be able to see there's a little shoal three mullet down there so that's brilliant so it looks like they're starting to come in so we'll get fishing and hopefully least pick one up um, as any mullet fisherman knows they're very very hard to catch actually there's three reasonable uh, mullet down there yeah that's great in fact there's four now so that's great to see them showing so I'm going to get my prawn pot down with the bread oozing out and hopefully keep these mullet close to me I start with a bit of float, uh, floating crust and all I'm going to do is just take the little size 10 hook and just hook it in the piece of crust there the other option is just to squeeze a bit of bread on and, and fish it just below the surface but we'll start with the floating crust and uh, see if I can get them to take that I've got the clutch on this reel set reasonably loose just in case I do hook a, a fish, you get a decent fish and the uh, mullet really do fight so you need, you need that little bit of give to let them particularly when I'm fishing such light tackle with such a light uh, bit of four pound, only four pound fluorocarbon to the hook um, I can't have that drag too tight otherwise I'm on risk of the of the line snapping so we've set, we've set that drag fairly loose but not too loose that I can't set the hook well I've got the mullet I've got the mullet interest in the bread the, the pieces of bread I don't know if you saw that and just nodging the bubble float there the pieces of bread are just sort of slowly oozing out of that little prawn pot and they're, they're actually they're actually coming in close to it and scooping it up so I'm, that's what <coughs> one great sign if you, if you can get the mullet quickly taking the, the, the offerings then you stand a pretty good chance of, of actually hooking one so I'm hopeful if I can just keep these mullet interested down there that's well I changed over to fishing the bread below I got a bit frustrated they were they were taking coming to the floated bread the bubble float and just couldn't hook them so I changed over but what I did notice from my From my little prawn. Sorry? No, no, I'm, I'm okay. I've got a drop net. Thanks, thank, thanks for your help, anyway. But uh, at last, I got one. Um, 
I noticed that they were taking the, the offerings I was giving from my shrimp pot, the pieces of bread that were floating out, they were only they were only taking the small bits, so I scowled right down and just put more bits of bread on and managed to get one to take. But the main thing is what seemed to do it was actually getting them, they were they started to gather around the we he's come alive now. They started to gather around the excuse me, I'm having trouble with my if you could hear if you could uh, feel my heart beating, it's a little bit difficult to try and play this fish and talk at the same time. The main thing was that they were gathering around the the shrimp pot with all the bread pieces of bread coming out. I'm just gonna get this oh boy get this drop net down there ready. Right. I've got the drop net ready and now we'll see if we can get get this fish in. Yeah, it's a mullet. Oh. Yeah, it's a grey, <coughs> what, what they call a grey mullet. mullet. Yeah. I'm going to put it back, yeah. I don't take them, I only, I only catch them for the sport. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have eaten them in the, in the past. Yeah, they're not so good. But, I mean, Oh, I mean, no, that's a bass, isn't it? No, it's a mullet. Oh, what a shame. It was a bass. Are you allowed to catch bass here? Yeah. Um, well, it, from the shore, it is, in a, it is a nursery area, what they call a nursery area. But um, from the shore, you are allowed to land them. It's only if you catch them from what they call a vessel. Okay. Um, a boat or a, or a kayak or, or that. You, you need to put them back. But to be honest with you, I mean, I don't... If I do... I don't fish for them in bass in the nursery area. Oh, is that that? No, this is a mullet. That's a mullet. We've got to get him into. Can you see? Maneuver it into yeah. this drop net. Yeah. That's a grey mullet. Isn't it? That's a grey mullet. And we got him. Or her. Can you eat it? No. Can you just hold that for me? Uh, Jane. You, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> you. It's quite a nice one, isn't it? Yes, it's a lovely one. Oh, oh yes. yes, actually, Jane, well done. <laughs> the one I just caught. Didn't you do well? <laughs> I did. You came oh, here. Yes. It, you, it's, it's taken me about three hours. You came here, and, <laughs> and, and within are. two minutes, you caught one. <laughs> right, I've got to deal with this quickly, so oh, because he's got yeah. to go back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, there you go. Patience. It's going to take the. Let me stop the towel. Take the hook out, and then I'm going to get it back. Get it back as soon as possible. As I was saying to those ladies, ladies there. I used to take uh, eat mullet in the um, past. Okay, so that's the hook out. There we are, one mullet, and I've got them feeding now. So hopefully I'll be able to catch another one. But I'm gonna gonna, gonna get this back now. Um, I'm not gonna handle it. Apparently, so, someone told me that they're they're quite fragile. They're scales, so um, I'm not gonna handle it. I'm gonna get it get it straight back. I'm not going to handle it by hand, I'm going to maybe use the towel to handle it. And I'm getting back. I'm going to pop it back. Give it a 
little bit of time to recover. It's fine, and away it goes. That's great. Yeah, that's fine. Right after that excitement of that mullet, I've calmed down enough to explain to you the uh, show you the float rig that I swapped over to. Like I said, I was struggling to get them. They were here, and they were showing interest in the bread on the bubble float, and I, but I just couldn't hook them. They were sucking at it and spitting it out and sucking at it. And because the, because the tide had started uh, flooding in, it was getting quite deep, and I know I, I noticed they were staying fairly fairly deep, and just taking very very small bits of bread from the the shrimp part. So I've swapped over so I can adjust the depth and maybe fish a little bit deeper than I can with the bubble float. I swapped over, and what I've done is I've um, to the end of the eight pound braid, I've got about twice the length of the rod now of four pound fluorocarbon and again that's so I can uh, adjust the depth later as the on the fluorocarbon as the plenty of fluorocarbon to adjust the depth later as it gets deeper and what I've done I've just slid on a self cocking float and then I stopped that with a couple of couple of shot about two feet from the hook but still got the size 10 hook but this time just putting on the smaller bits of bread because that seems to be what they're taking and then so I can adjust the depth I've got a stop knot which I've tied to the fluorocarbon which I can just slide up slide slide up as the tide as the water gets a little bit deeper so that's the rig I've got now and that's proven successful on on this occasion but we'll see see if I can catch another one but even if I don't really really pleased just to catch catch the one i've been joined here by kieran uh, who's also fishing for mullet and uh, we, we we actually met last night i was fishing for something else and kieran was fishing just here on the wall and you actually had a take didn't you kieran hooked yeah. one but unfortunately it, it got off but kieran is, uh, does a lot more mullet fishing than i do so i was just thought it'd be interesting to see what tackle you you're using kieran so what, what rod you got there it's a dawa feeder rod yeah uh, 11 foot yeah I find it casts you can fish deeper with a longer rod if it's a bit short you can't get that depth on your float yeah but that's hook. funny enough that's the problem because I only go mullet fishing two or three times a year so I don't bother paying out for a proper gear no, no. so I use but I found with that rod because it's eight foot I'm able to use it like a, s a slider because I, yeah, I can't get on with it and then I, I, I was getting a bit tangled with it yeah, yeah so yeah. you've got the length of the rod where you can fish the I depth think 11 foot's enough. yeah I mean, I, I know people who use 12 foot, you know, like a, a, a match rod. Yeah, yeah. You know, of course, fishing match rod. They have these rods now, they're called waggler rods, mm -hmm. which are quite porky because they're for carp fishing, mm. which I think suits the mullet because, you know, I use a five pound uh, hook then. Yeah, I was going to ask you that, but but this rod, has got, oh, it's obviously got a lovely soft tip to, to absorb the fight yeah, of the mullet. Yeah. yeah, which is what you need, isn't it, really? Oh, yeah. yeah You've got to have that. Do, yeah. So the what's the main line you've got on the reel then? Eight pound. You got eight pound main line. Yeah, and a five pound fluoro leader. Le uh, tip it. Yeah. 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 And uh, then got like three, three AA float. Yeah. I would use a bigger one if you had to cast far, but here we don't. So no, you're just dropping it off the edge here, aren't we? And at times, I find they like that bread fluttering down with the other. Yeah. So I wouldn't have any lead down down the line like I have now yeah but these smelt that we've got here are a bit of an issue so I'm trying to get through them and that's why I put lead down the line yeah Kieran's right we've we got we're absolutely invaded here by smelt and they're of course they're having a go at the bread so what you would normally do Kieran is have your, sh your, sh your shot a fair way away I'd from the bread probably have it four or five foot up the line yeah and let that bread just flutter down and yeah natural yeah. kind of presentation mm -hmm. I don't bother fishing people say you have to fish on the bottom for them but I don't find you do well no earlier when I caught mine because I could see them I mean they were they were I could see the depths they were right 
working on the bottom right up to the top. They come up and down, yeah. And they were coming, they were actually came up for my bread. Yeah. 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 I found, because I've got the bucket of mash here. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Yeah. Let's, I've got mash bread. Okay, we'll just have a look at that. Yeah, that's with just... With a bit of fish mixed with it. Yeah. Just for a bit of smell. And if you see when I chuck it in, you'll see it, mate. That goes down nice and slow. And I've watched mullet come up through. Mm. So what I like to do is just let it all go down together. Yeah, brilliant. And you get this cloud. Yeah. I mean, that's a must. You, you've got to keep occasionally putting out that. Yeah, I think so. Haven't you? To yeah. get to get yeah. them. It's particularly where they're in areas where they're not used to bread. And I think where there's a strong claw, you need something, either a, a, an onion bag or a, some some kind of mechanism to keep. Yeah. Because <coughs> bread, bread bread's not a natural bait for them, so we need, you need to educate them, don't you? Yeah. Educate them too. I think around arbors they do. Well, I said when I was talking earlier about the fishing here that a lot of the locals we have a couple of resident swans come in and the, some of the locals up the harbour up there they're feeding them on bread yeah. and so because the mullet will cotton on to this oh yeah yeah i mean they 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 soon cotton on to a they're food quite source opportunistic, oh yeah yeah, I think, yeah you know whatever's yeah. going but they can be hard to catch mm. <laughs> what size hook was you did you have on there i've got a size 10 on yeah 10 yeah the same as i did yeah but i don't have a big piece of bread and i like to have the point of the hook showing through the bread that's really that's really interesting that, I don't cover it because I've read I'll, I'll show you yeah so. otherwise you just pull it straight out the mouth wouldn't you the piece exactly. of bread mm. I've only got a small piece and if you can see there you see the point yeah I think we're probably just yeah I can yeah well, that'll pick up yeah yeah and yeah because <coughs> they're not easy to work anyway and well I can see the reason for that is because when I've seen them if you had that hook completely covered, when you can see them take the bread, they suck it in. If you pull and it's completely covered, all you're going to do is pull it out of, the mouth. Back out of the mouth. You're not going to hook them yeah. at all. No. No. all right. Okay, Kieran, well, thanks for that. That's, right. That's really interesting. Yeah. And uh, Let's see if we can catch one. enjoy the rest of your stay, and I hope you manage to get one before you go <laughs> yeah. back. I haven't had one yet. Yeah, you will. You well, will. That's mullet fishing. Yeah, it is. That's why we do it. Yeah, it is. It's a challenge. Yeah. Thanks very much for that. I fished on until dusk, but no more mullet. However, spurred on by the catch and bitten by the mullet fishing bug, I returned the next day to see if I could catch another. It's the hook one again and I can't tell you how frustrating mullet fishing is I've seen I've had about 10 mullet take the take the bread in you can see it take it in but can you get it get them to actually take the bread to actually really commit it's almost like they they play with it they suck it in spit it out suck it in split it spit it out but at last I've managed to hook one not a very big one it's not as smaller than the one yesterday but it's a, a mullet and that's fantastic right
play and once again play it to the drop net. And then And we got him. Yeah, it's only only a very small one this time. But still, fantastic to get one. So there you go. Lovely little grey mullet. Once again, we'll get this back, get this back quickly. Yep, it's gone back great. And there it goes. Just had to have a think about it for a while, you just recover a bit and it's gone. Well, I've been joined, uh, joined again by Kieran and Kieran's, Kieran's, he's come, he's round, he's round the corner here, Kieran. Hang on, hang on, you might get, you might, no, you're okay, you're clear now. Go so we take it. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's a miniature one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna jump in straight now. Yeah, okay. Well well done. <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah, small we a small one again, but uh, it's a little bit bigger than the other the other one I caught today. Not a bad one. Right, let's get this ready. It's on a ratchet, so you sort of. Want to bring it round? Yeah, I'll bring it round with more room, wouldn't I? How do you let go on that? <coughs> yeah, let's say it's like a ratchet system. Life in it, this one. That's a strong fish. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, sort <laughs> of that yeah, that's what makes it. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Quick! Do you know what I think? What's happened there is the same as what happened to you the other day. With that bloody sliding the things around. I know, I'm not going to get it off of it. No, don't worry, I've got another one. I've got yeah. oh. Well, it's time for me to call it a day now. The light's starting to fade. Really pleasing to at least catch a couple of mullet over the, over the couple of sessions. Disappointing to have lost the one, but that's the way it goes. But it went really quiet after about three or four hours of the flooding tide and the mullet seemed to disappear. But great fun, they are one hell of a challenge to catch and really frustrating and really entertaining when you can actually see the mullet like we've been able to see the mullet today and see them take that bread in but it infuriates them when you see them take the bread in and you, you still can't hook them but great to great when you do hook one even if they are small they are such a challenge and very very rewarding to, to, to catch one. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching. <laughs>